Hey everybody. In this video, we're just going to take a look at the workflow I use to animate the metahumans in my Unreal Engine Virtual Production Fellowship project. So the project was a three minute short and I went into the fellowship really wanting to dive into metahuman animation. And so the short featured three metahuman characters and it was a dialogue driven plot. So we'll take a look at a simple shot to really break down the metahuman workflow used in the project. Now, if you'd like to see the project, there's a link in the description. Go ahead and watch it. I don't think there's going to be any spoilers in this particular video, so you're welcome to watch this first if you know you don't have to worry about spoilers or anything like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at this simple shot. Now, in the uh, Unreal Engine project, the way things were arranged were was that I had a folder that was going to be the animations, and it has a few folders uh, that isolate various animation assets for different characters. But for the most part, there's a folder for each shot in the show. There's somewhere between 40 and 50 shots. And looking at shot 110 here, and I, I numbered in tens. Um, as I worked on the project, shots got added, shots got removed. So you could see, for example, where I originally planned a shot 130 and a shot 140, I managed to insert a shot uh, 133 in between. And so that, oh yeah, I always number shots in tens when I get started. And then shot 110, uh, this is right here, is a great example as to why I have a separate folder per shot. And that is that as this shot was revised, I would just uh, click on whatever the most recent version was. Control W would duplicate that sequence and automatically increment the version number up. So this is take eight of this particular shot. And this is a really simple shot. Um, I have my sequencer docked here in the same tab area as the content browser. And the shot is actually in the edit. Uh, turned out to be one or two shots within the edit, but it was a single performance here, right? So if I go ahead to the beginning and hit play, we'll hear the dialogue and see the performance. Good plan. Except for one big mistake. All right. So there we go. And the way this was put together is the uh, dialogue came from my voice artist, uh, who was another fellow in the program. Awesome voice. It was really great. I just asked him, is there any chance you could read some lines? And not only did he read lines, but he also uh, did a capture with his cell phone so that I could uh, use his facial performance as well. And then uh, once the edit was starting to come together, I went ahead and exported just the audio for this segment as a WAV WAV file and so that it could be brought into the sequence itself. So uh, there's also a bit of a body performance here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, for the body action, for this particular shot, the underlying motion capture is actually a uh, idol from um, a Mixmo. Yeah. So. Here, here's the kind of end result um, from, I did the edit in Motion Builder. So this is the preview model of the metahuman body size for my character. So in this case, it's the metahuman, um, I think it's, uh, is it tall, medium? Yeah, it's the tall, normal weight. Uh, preview. And if you ever want to get access to these, they're, they're complete metahumans. Every metahuman folder comes with them and comes with all of them. So it's just under content and then uh, metahumans. There we are. And then uh, common. So this common folder will exist no matter how many metahumans you have. I had uh, three that I was using in particular. This, this guy, was, I was calling him my quiet guy. I have uh, the girl and the boss and then common and inside common is another folder common and then right here these are uh, various skeletal meshes of all the different sized bodies and so this can be exported as an FBX so in this case this guy's uh, the the male tall normal weight right so I could right click on that choose asset actions and export and that would give me the base FBX file for that character. So that's what this model is and it's complete with a head. It's not a matching head, but you know, it's just about right. So to get this animation, basically the process would be that I would start out with just the uh, 
the Y bot from Mixamo, right? So I had a folder of all the various Mixamo animations that I downloaded. And I downloaded all of these targeted to the Mixamo Y bot character. So uh, the Y bot character looks like this. I'm just going to open this up. And so here is the Y bot in T pose. And when retargeting in Motion Builder, which is this tool that I'm using, you need to characterize the um, models and that just identifies them as a character, a biped character that can be animated. So I had this set up in advance. So I basically downloaded this from Mixamo and characterized it. And that makes it possible to retarget any animation that's on this onto other models. So I could start out by putting an idle animation on this character. And so in this case, it would be to go to the story mode, right click, add a character animation track, set that to the Y bot, and then insert a animation. So I could right click on that track, insert an animation file, and then here in my Mixamo list I could find an idle. I think this one was idle too. So I can bring that in. All right, so now we've got like the short little idle and I can play through that and well unfortunately the timeline's a little short, right? So uh, quick adjust is right click and frame start end. All right, so uh, there's my little idle, and his arms are down, and it's really short, so I wanted it to be longer, so I just click and drag on the end. And you can do a lot of this in Unreal Engine these days, but um, I just found it a lot more familiar to work with Motion Builder, and some of the animation editing features in Unreal are a little bit new, and um, so they're, they're still being kind of refined, so that ideally it, there'll be a point in the future when Motion Builder itself wouldn't be necessary for all of this, but uh, this was what I was using for this workflow. All right, so I've got this loop now. It's you know idled. I can right click and set frame start end. And so he idles there. And so now I wanted to put this on my MetaHuman. Well, like I said, I could merge in my MetaHuman, which I already had characterized. So I have a folder here, Motion Builder Characters. And so all of the characters went through a, very, uh, a variety of iterations in getting them characterized. Uh, one of the characters is like a really big robot, and it's characterized. But uh, mainly in this case, I was using this male, tall, normal weight uh, body preview, and it's characterized. And I used the merge command to bring this in. So when I open this, it doesn't have any animations. Um, he comes in, and he's standing in his T pose. So I posed this character in the T pose for the characterization process. And now that he's in this file, I can go to Navigator and look down here in Characters, and there's my Y bot, which is the blue guy here, and then the MetaHuman is uh, right here. The nice thing is I can select my MetaHuman character over here, and as a source, instead of none, I can choose the Y bot character. And now my MetaHuman moves in uh, sync with that Y bot. And so uh, there's a really quick step of just plotting, bake plot, bake to skeleton. And now all of that animation has been copied onto the MetaHuman skeleton. So I no longer need the Y bot. So I can just select all of this and right click and select its branches and right click and delete, confirm. And yeah, we're going to delete all the things. Yes to all, delete the character. Yes to all, yes to all. So now the Y bot from Mixamo is gone, but that animation, that looping animation, is now applied to my MetaHuman. Uh, you'll notice, of course, that in this idle animation, the character's arms are down. And again, this is just something that's really quick and easy to do in Motion Builder. I could go to the character, double click, and then I can plot this animation from the skeleton it's on right now and plot it to a control rig. And with that, we'll do FKIK and plot. And so now I have control with animation layers, right? So I can add an animation layer. This animation layer is additive. So anything that I do in keyframe on this additive layer is going to be on top of the existing animation. So I don't know if I'm going to get this exactly right on my first try here, but I could just uh, take the shoulder here, E to rotate, same set of controls as Unreal Engine, in fact, and I will go to uh, local, and you know I can just bring his hands up here, right? So there's one, and key it, key, and then the other shoulder. 
the same kind of thing. A couple little keyframe. There we are, just a little pose and key. And now with just those two keyframes, those two adjustments to the shoulders, I've got this idle animation with the hands up. So that's basically the whole process. Uh, finishing it up is just plot again to the skeleton this time. And now all of that animation is on the skeleton, including the hands up. And it's all on a single layer. And so then I can save as or, um, this file and as an FBX and import it into Unreal Engine. So it's all that quick. Inside Unreal Engine, I kept a folder full of all of those incoming FBXs. So in my animation folder, I had uh, Quiet Guy. This is that character. Double click. And here's like his hands up kind of thing. So hands up basic. You know, I could double click this. And of course, it's previewed with the, uh, the body that doesn't have any body. It's just really hands and some ankles poking out. But uh, once it's in here as an animation sequence, it's really easy to add in sequencer. So I have a track here for this actor. And under body, I could uh, you know add an animation track. Any animation set up for the metahuman would appear here. And I could just say uh, hand, for example. And then there's my hands up. Uh, animations. I could select that and add it to an animation track. Uh, the reason this, this animation track right now, it's not active, right? If I right click it, you can see active is unchecked. And that's because I then copied this animation to keyframes on the control rig and it's plotted. So, right? so anytime you have an animation uh, and you have a track for an actor, and in this case, it's the component of the actor, the body component, you can right click and you can bake to control rig. And, and then, of course, choose the control rig. And that basically takes all of the animation that's on the skeleton and inverse plots it onto the control rig. So then it can be further edited right here in Sequencer. It's pretty much the same process as plotting or in uh, baking in Motion Builder. Uh, you know, I could always bake to an animation sequence so I could go the other way around. So right now this animation's on the control rig. If I bake it to an animation sequence, then I get a single U asset file that's transportable and applied, <clears throat> excuse me, something that can easily apply to other metahumans. So uh, you can even edit with an FK rig, meaning it'll plot everything to a forward kinematic rig. But in this case, of course, I just plotted it to the control rig and that gave me the ability then to isolate uh, the head motions and add new head motions. So I kind of wanted this guy to glare and kind of tilt his head in response to the dialogue he was using. And so, um, you know, I could go to the head control. I can go and filter all of these tracks because, I mean, there's there's tons of controls, right? And there's a lot of tracks, but it's really easy to do something like head, G-A-D. And then here's the head control, right? Here's the control rig and I can grab the head control here and I could add keyframes to this. And you can see here is where my keyframes were on mainly the rotations of roll and pitch. And I was keying them based on the dialogue. And so you could see here, incidentally, that when I do that filtering, I can't see the uh, audio track anymore, right? So if I clear out my filter, we've got the audio track and I can see the waveform and that's kind of handy. But as soon as I filter and work on a single control, that audio track goes away. So that's where these marks came in. So what I could do is play back on the uh, audio track. So it looks like I don't have a mark here for, for this little word, right? So I could move my playback head right to the beginning of that word, hit play and listen to it. Except for. All right, well, so this is like just a ping. This is in the, uh, the music track. It wasn't dialogue, that's why it's not marked. But if I wanted to mark it as ping, I could uh, bring my playhead to where I want to mark, tap the M key for mark and now it's marked. You can barely see it, but there's a little uh, vertical line there. And then I could right click and give that mark a name, in this case, uh, ping, right? and enter. So now when I move away from that, I could see where the ping is. And these marks are visible even when I'm filtering head. Right. So now I can see that, all right, well, there's you know a ping here and except for, here's those words and those syllables. And so that's the pipeline for the body animation. So this will end part one. In part two, we'll take a look at the workflow for the facial animation. Until then, have fun.